In this video, I'm going to go through everything you need to know regarding the Mushroom Cup Traxxas strategies. Before we get started, I'd highly recommend checking out the video I uploaded last week on the Mushroom Cup's tracks driving if you haven't already. These are the essentials you need to know before you can apply the strategies I talk about in this video. So with that being said, let's start giving her bud. Starting things off, we got Mario Kart Stadium. As I mentioned in last week's video, this is one of the more technical tracks in the game, which can make this a running track. However, this can also work as a bagging track due to the numerous off-road shortcuts, especially the ending shortcut, whether you take the glider cut or not, and shucks are pretty common here. As a result, I'd consider this a balanced track. Moving forward, I'll be classifying each track as either a running, balanced, or bagging track. While you can run or bag on most tracks and find success, these are just general terms made to make the track selection process as simple as possible. Because this is a balanced track, you could pick this track in many scenarios. In a 6v6 situation, an example would be when your team is at least 1-3-4, as second has a very slim chance of pulling a mushroom first set. In a Mogi setting, if your main objective is running in first, I wouldn't recommend this as your go-to track if you get first. There's almost no chance you'll keep first with people shrooming in the beginning shortcut. Although, if you're okay with that and only want to stay in the front, as long as you can maneuver around the items after the beginning cut, you could be given her. But either way, Mario Kart Stadium is a balanced track. This part should be pretty quick, but I think it's still super important to know about all of the item sets. On this track, you have three item sets. The first set has six regular item boxes. Nothing too special, just starting the race off smoothly. The second set has five regular item boxes and a double box, two boxes from the very right box. In a lap three situation, this can be a very crucial box to go through. And the last set has four regular boxes and a double box on both the very left and the very right. You've got to be careful here though, as you can't go back to get a double if you miss it since you'll be on the glider. Just keep that in mind when you need at least one item. Remember, one item is better than no item. So if a ton of people are flocking to the doubles, it might be in your best interest to secure a single item and call it a day. Even though I've already made a few videos on how to use the Golden Mushroom Star and Bullet Bill to the best of their abilities, I'll go over them here again, as well as which items you can combine these power items with for the best results. When using a Golden, your best bet is using it shortly after the glider ramp, taking it through the off-road shortcuts, and getting a box at the first set. With an item like Triple Shrooms, you can take the two off-road cuts after the first set, get the box on the ramp, and you'll be given her. You can also take the glider cut with the golden as well. You'll get nearly the same result. It's a bit slower, but you'll also have a lesser chance of getting hit while shrooming up. As for the star, you have two options. You can use it through the beginning shortcut, take the next offered cut, get the box on the ramp, and you'll be given her. You can also change your star into the last set and take the ending shortcut. Any power item will help you out here. But I feel like it's a lot easier to use triple shrooms to the best of your ability afterwards, chain at the ramp, and you'll have two brand new items, likely after catching up to the pack. And of course, you have the bill extension. Make sure to hold right upon reaching the glider ramp to get the full extension. In general, these power item strategies should help you a lot on this track. I was initially going to go through the back spam spots for bananas, greens, and bombs, but A, you can back bananas in most of the bomb spots anyways, and B, there aren't any unique green spots, they're all just super situational. But in any case, let's go over the bomb spots on Mario Kart Stadium. I'd only recommend using this bomb spot if you have protection behind your bomb, or you're making a play with a teammate who will protect you afterward. Backing a bomb in the beginning shortcut will benefit you a lot. It's a hot spot on this track, so you have a good chance of hitting a few people. And for the people you do hit, if they use a before entering the cut, you're essentially wasting their shroom. It's a solid bomb spot, but definitely situational given the format you're playing, or whatever your two items are before making the play. This next one works really well, as even if you don't hit anyone, you're still going to benefit from it. You want to back your bomb as you hit the wall while on the glider ramp. You'll get a double box, and even if the person you hit gets hit while on the glider ramp, they won't be able to do the glider cut efficiently. They also won't be able to do the glider cut if they avoid the bomb, since they'll have to reposition themselves before going off the glider. So yeah, this is a really strong bomb spot. 
Finally, let's talk about the shock spot. Like I mentioned earlier, you have three item sets on this track. You also have a potential target shock spot, but the window is very small, so it's not worth putting a ton of emphasis on. So we're going to stick to shocking opponents after boxes. I'm also going to only go through lap three situations here. Now, obviously, this shock spot won't always be in your best interest, especially if you're only going to wait till lap three. But if you have the option of using it, especially on lap three, you should use it at all costs. Chaining your shock into the second set will do a lot of damage. A ton of people like to hold back on the final glider with power items to end the race in the air with a lesser chance of getting hit. So the people you catch up to very likely won't get that opportunity. Even though people in the back will get items to do the glider cut with, you will have already finished the race by the time they're doing it. In any case, that's all there is to talk about regarding the strategies on Mario Kart Stadium. Water Park is definitely one of the least common tracks in the game. There's only one shortcut on this track, and it's not even that special, so this is a very good track for running. An underrated running track in all honesty. I think in a 6v6 setting, the best spots on this track would be top 3. First takes the right coins, second takes the left coins, and since third already has one coin when the race starts, they should be good to go. It's also nice because if an opponent is fourth and they pull a shroom first set, they likely won't be able to pass first. In a lounge setting, I think this track has the potential to work really well when starting in first, I might try it off for myself at some point, who knows. But either way, Water Park. Definitely a strong front running track. Once again, and this applies to all tracks in the Mushroom Cup, three item sets are on this track. Nothing too special when starting the race, just six single boxes after the stairs. At the second set, the boxes are heavily spread out. You have five single boxes and a double box left to the very right box. I'd only recommend going for this double box if there's next to no chance you won't get it stolen from you because you have to go really wide for this double box and missing it can really screw you over. And at the last set, there are five single boxes with one double box, two boxes to the right of the very left single box. This is a much easier item box to go through in general, making it a much more appealing option online. So just keep that in mind when you're on the verge of taking this double box. Unfortunately, on this track, power items can't be used to benefit you insanely, but they do still have some uses. For the gold, you do have two ways you can use it. One on its own, the other if you have another item. On its own, this golden strat shines in a lap 3 situation. By goldening in this patch of off-road, taking a small off-road cut afterwards, and not low gliding at the glider, your golden will take you to the finish line without landing until you pass it. But let's say you have a golden and triple shrooms, for example. Your cue to begin goldening is after your super mini turbo before the ramp runs out. It'll end once you reach the second set and makes the big turn super easy. With any item in your pocket, really, chaining your star at the second set could help you out quite a bit. You could cut off a tiny bit of off-road and your star will run out right before the last set. It's just alright. The build is pretty solid on this track. Using it after exiting the first water section and holding tight will take you through the whole big turn so easily. It'll drop you off right before the last set, and without brake drifting, you can simply hold a right drift and get the double box. This might not be in your best interest if you land the pack though, since like I said, this double box is very attractive. So just keep that in mind. Of course, having any item behind your build makes this so much better. You have a few places where you can take advantage of the bomb on this track. If you back it on the tight path before the ramp, as long as the people behind you take that path, they have no chance of surviving. This one would be insanely good, but you have a very easy way of going around a potential bomb being the wide path before the ramp. If you do land hits though, the victims won't be able to do any of the ramp strats, so it can be pretty useful. You can also back a bomb midway through the S turn. This is a pretty tight section of the track, so as long as your opponent stays on the road, you're going to hit them. And you can see here that even if you do avoid the bomb without a speed item, you're going to lose a ton of time regardless. Lastly, backing a bomb after the glider strat could do some damage, especially in a lap 3 situation. Your opponents who do the glider strat will have next to no chance of avoiding this bomb, but it can be easily avoided by not doing the glider strat, so it has its pros and cons. But all in all, there are some pretty solid bomb spots on this track. Once again, I'd say the best shock spot is shocking your opponents after the second set. There's a good chance that the people in front of you would have flocked to the wide double, and denying that it was worth their time can work really well in your favor. This could also limit anything significant you need to worry about on the S turn, and will deny people likely close to you at the end the ability to use shrooms on the glider and stay in the air for the rest of the race. One way or another, this shock spot can be pretty effective. Now let's get her going on Sweet Sweet Canyon. 
Sweet Sweet Canyon is a little on the rare side online, but even so, you do have ways you can use this track to your advantage. This track can work well for both running and bagging, but by bagging, you could be at a huge advantage if you pull Shock. Without Shock, this is a solid group running track. So, yeah, this is a balanced track. In a 6v6 setting, I'd say having a ton of middle spots with at least one person in top 3 are the best spots for this track if you're trying to take advantage of the front early. This is because it's super easy to either draft or shroom after the cannon glider, and first won't be able to keep first unless unless they can get a draft themselves and have no one else pass them or bump them. The point is, starting in middle spots is solid if you want to take control of the front early. In a lounge setting, your best bet at running would be starting anywhere from 3rd to 6th given like where you want to be in the front. I wouldn't recommend bagging too heavily if you're on your own, since it's really only beneficial if you dodge shock or use a shock of your own. On this track, there are once again three item sets. As always, the race starts off with nothing too special, just six single boxes going into the first turn. At the second set, you have four single boxes with two double boxes next to the far left and right single. You definitely have a lot more time to secure a box here. As long as you have a good idea of who is around you and the likelihood of you getting whatever box, you should be given her in most cases. And at the last set, on both the blue and pink path, you have three single boxes with the far left box on the blue path and the far right box on the pink path being a double double box. Exiting the pink path is much easier when approaching the final section of the track though, regardless of which item you take, namely the double box. If you have any speed item behind your golden, your cue to begin goldening is after the boost from your trick runs out, as shown here. Your golden will end right before the final set, you can get a super mini triple trick off the ramp, take the ending shortcut, and you'll be given her full throttle. I think in most scenarios, simply chaining your star at the last set and taking the ending shortcut is the way to go. As long as you don't have something stupid in your pocket, you'll likely be in a really solid position. The same can be said for the bill. Using it in the ending shortcut is a fantastic way to catch up and save yourself from potentially getting target shock. I wish there were cooler combinations to show off here, but it is what it is. You have three bomb spots on this track that can cause a ton of damage. The first one is just unavoidable if you aren't close enough to the person backing or don't back up. Backing your bomb before the cannon glider will make for a massive gap between you and the people behind you. It's an obliterator. Another really strong bomb spot takes place at the very end of either path you're on. In most cases, this bomb spot is also unavoidable. Not much else needs to be said. Lastly, you have the bomb spot that blocks the ending shortcut. This can work in your favor whether you back it and go around the last turn or if you shroom it in the cut and back your bomb immediately but either way it's pretty solid i'd say it's definitely easier to avoid and potentially predict but all in all you have some pretty solid options for backing a bomb on this track Remember when I said bagging could work really well for you or your team if you get the shock? Well, this is why. You have a huge cannon glider section, which is the primary use for the shock, screwing everyone on the cannon glider section over. You can use this shock spot by either trying to get as many people target shocked as possible, or you could chain your shock into the first set and get another item. It's situational for sure, but it's an incredible shock spot in a 6v6 situation. So that's all there is to go over regarding the strategies on Sweet Sweet Canyon. Now let's finish her off on Thwop Ruins. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the least common track in the game. But even so, I personally always liked Thwomp Ruins, and I honestly wish it was picked more. In any case, this is definitely more of a running track. The shot can do some solid damage here, but in most cases, if you can maintain a top spot during lap 1 and 2, you're likely going to finish in a top spot as long as you aren't close to the pack. The beginning Shrubless Cut makes the beginning a little insane, but when starting in first, it can work really well. In a 66 situation, I'd say having a mix of top spots, including including first and bottom spots might be the play when picking this track. I'm not certain on this, I say this given how the beginning of races here work and the fact that it can be tough to catch up without shock. In a lounge setting, you could honestly pick this one starting in first. As long as you have a consistent method for taking the beginning shortcut without getting bumped, you should be given her. On this track, each set of boxes only goes up to 5 boxes in total rather than the usual 6. At the first set, as usual, there are 5 single boxes. Nothing too fancy. The second set does get a little spicy though. On the regular path, you have 4 single boxes with a double box in the very middle. But if you take the anti-gravity path, along with potentially getting up to 6 coins, you could get yourself 2 items there. It's a lot less attractive than the regular path's double box, so take advantage of that. And at the last set, you have 4 single boxes with a double box right of the very left box. You you do have to go pretty wide to get this box though, so it has its pros and cons for sure. Missing any box this wide in general can put you in a rough spot, so just keep that in mind. 
Unfortunately, there aren't any notable combinations on this track, so I'll quickly go over the best places to use power items. You want to release your super mini turbo in the air before landing on the ending shortcut, and when you land, begin goldening. If you do this correctly, you should be able to get a box at the next set and take the beginning shortcut without having to waste another item. This is one of the most rewarding golden strats in the game. As for the star, chitting into the first set and taking the beginning shortcut is your best bet for success. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And for the bill, using it right before fully committing to a specific path is what will help you the most. It'll drop you off right before the last set, and with another strong item in your pocket, you could be giving her like it's your job. You have a few spots where you can really screw people over with a bomb on this track. The first one takes place in the beginning shortcut, where you back your bomb on the ramp. It's worth mentioning that you should only do this if you know you'll be protected afterwards, since it's right after the first set and you could easily be punished. It will do a ton of damage to those you hit though, so it has its strengths and weaknesses. You could also back a bomb right before the glider ramp. Even though those who commit to the glider ramp won't be able to avoid it, this is a very easy bomb spot to predict, and on top of that, the glider isn't even faster. Therefore, this isn't the greatest bomb spot. Coming up next is backing a bomb on the turn before the last set in between the left wall and the coin. Your opponents will have to go really wide to avoid this, and even if you miss, the next set is right in front of you, so you should be good either way. And last is backing your bomb on the ending shortcut. This one is lethal for those you land a hit on. Unfortunately, if you do have a bomb in plain sight, there's next to no chance people will take the shortcut and risk getting bombed, especially in a lap 3 situation. So you'll have to play your cards right to make the most out of this bomb, which has a ton of reward. But altogether, you can do quite a bit with the bomb on this track. This shock spot isn't very flashy at all, but with the right items and the right strategies used, this one can work very well. You want to shock your opponents after the second set. This will benefit you a lot as you approach the anti-gravity section. You could also shock some people off the glider, and in a 66 situation, you could shock your teammates onto the glider, or before boxes. That's probably the better option in most cases. Regardless, your opponents won't be able to do much to you after shocking here, so you'll be given a full throttle, no doubt about it. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about the strategies for every track in the Mushroom Cup. I'll be uploading a JP Given or Analysis for my Monday or Tuesday video next week. And after that, I'll be covering the Flower Cup driving and strategies. So look forward to that. Anyway, if you liked what you saw and maybe learned something, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm grinding really hard for 500 subscribers by the end of the year. And by subscribing, you would help me a lot. But with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic day, and keep on giving her, bud.